can we prove uh, that God exists? Uh, this is the topic uh, we'll be talking. And uh, mostly you know, uh, scientific based, you know. So you can, it will be help, at least it helped me in my life. I will tell you, by this I have more faith in God because I can feel like the, the challenge is, uh, for example, Yashoda seeing in the mouth of Krishna herself looking at. Can we comprehend this really? Is it possible? How can we understand this? You know? So by the end of the this presentation you will see that it is really possible. You know, we can see how an amazing thing Krishna is doing it in our, in us. And specifically we are uh, we are uh, establishing that something called living software, a sukshma deha, subtle body, really exists. Okay? I can help you that you can feel yourself. Once you do that, once we establish that, then you are on the way, you know, anybody. Huh? Uh, then we also establish Atma, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Huh? And then based on the Brahmati, Paramatma, Bhagavan, I think, I will be a little faster huh? because tomorrow we'll have more time. Huh? We can keep up with it because. We have one hour. Huh? We have two hours. One hour, right? Uh, but still, I huh? will be a little faster. Any questions later on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 7.30. 7.30, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, okay, very good. Thank you. Now, uh, in this one, uh, and also the consequences of this learning understanding is that how the health, see we have so many problems, psychosomatic diseases, how we can, uh, how we can deal with this, how uh, in a harmonious way. That will come out of this presentation. Huh? Uh, so, um, let us talk about the, you know, the protein DNA, flower power. These are all, what we are saying is, if you look at nature, there is always a cycle. Huh? There is a cycle. Uh, example, um, the, uh, of course, the, uh, uh, Within human, we know um, there is a circadian rhythm, huh? uh, running about 24 hours. Then the is entrainable, and then this also temperature compensation is there. Huh? Then the example I'm g giving you here is: look at this. Uh, if you take the silkworm, the egg it starts with the egg, and then it starts small. Uh, you know small entity, then it goes through like four uh, stages of what you call fever. In other words, it sheds the skin so that it becomes bigger. Huh? And then eventually the uh, cocoon forms and then the adult, this uh, moth comes out and it mates and then again the eggs and then see, always cycle, right? And the notice that when it is becoming bigger and bigger, and it changes even the form here, see? So what is being changing here? The body is continuously changing. But the software, you know, Sukshma Deha, living, living software, see we are saying, the, it is a living software and a synthetic software, okay? Whatever human is making, suppose many of you are software engineers, what you are making is a synthetic software, not the living software. And here, this living software building the living hardware, that is the difference. Okay, it is guiding. Imagine this small little egg comes out the living entity. So it is building it. This guy has a brain. Okay, there is no brain here. Okay, it builds the brain. What is that building that brain? That is the living software building it and builds the hardware under the interface, and then see the various transformation. So the software is not changing here, the hardware is being continuously changing. So that's kind of thing. Huh? Then loss of matter, you know, Pauli exclusive principle is there. Now, we, they are, why the Pauli exclusive principle? Because for the stability. Huh? 
stability is there. And now we do not see the operator nor, uh, nor the uh, invisible, huh? law or the operator. We don't see the law, right? <laughs> Pauli exclusive principle, they say we don't say uh, how we recognize that law. And then we don't see the operator in this one. Huh? And then we say the, this is a periodical table. But in this one, the thing missing is the mind, intelligence, the subtle things. Now linking these elements, that is what is missing. Huh? And look at the, because we'll be talking more about the human cell. I'm just giving a glimpse. This one is a human cell and it's a couple of micrometers, you know. If you look at this, uh, see, uh, you know, the human is somewhere here. Human cell is uh, somewhere in this 10 micrometer. And then we'll be ta looking at the proteins. Uh, uh, virus is here. Uh, proteins about 1 to 10 nanometer. Uh, and then molecules are in, the, in this range, 0.1. Uh, and you look at this. The science has a big problem. This one. See, this is a nascent protein. Uh, and when the protein takes the called uh, folding, uh, it, it look, comes up with a complex three-dimensional shape. Each protein has a unique shape, and that shape what makes the is functioning. Now there are all kinds of proteins. Uh, human has not yet made any uh, protein, you know, uh, because he don't he does not understand the process. This process from this end. And the ribosome makes the protein and how it takes on this shape, it is really, they have no idea because it's very complex. Now, for example, I've given you uh, in this one, uh, okay. it's about one minute. Uh, Sound is not there. For most proteins, the polypeptide then. The life cycle of a typical protein begins with its synthesis on a ribosome. As the polypeptide chain grows, cycle of a typical protein begins with its synthesis on a ribosome. As the polypeptide chain grows, molecules of a chaperone protein bind along its length. This prevents misfolding of the nascent polypeptide. ATP binding causes chaperone release. For most proteins, the polypeptide then folds into a native conformation. However, for some proteins, like actin, an additional folding step occurs. The unfolded polypeptide is bound in a large chaperonin protein. Within the chaperonin, the polypeptide folds and is expelled from the complex. This requires ATP. Newly liberated actin is then able to polymerize into a filament, which becomes part of the actin cytoskeleton. The lifespan of a protein is determined by the amino acid at its end terminus, or by the presence of a destruction sequence, such as PEST. Protein degradation begins when ubiquitin is covalently attached to the target protein by a conjugating enzyme. Multiple rounds of this reaction modifies the protein with a ubiquitin chain. This chain targets the protein for the 26S proteasome, the major protein degradation machine in the cytoplasm. The proteasome cleaves the tagged protein into ubiquitin and short peptides. Now, the, see, this is, this is actually the protein formation inside 10 micrometer cell, you know. 
and these things are automatically happening you know it's i mean you can see a small video later on and there is something called a leventhal paradox you see for example the if you if you assume there is 100 amino acids and then three possible configurations you know for the for the uh, protein folding then it comes to uh, almost 3 to 4 100 and that turns out to be if you imagine even uh, cycle you know 10 to power 13 cycle per operation this would ta- takes 10 to power 27 years <laughs> in this <laughs> in the fastest supercomputers whereas by in practice it less than 1 second how it will take us to figure out 10 to power 27 even the beyond the age of the universe how <laughs> done in 1 second and that too they are 90 huh? like um see the suppose imagine there is a protein which has about 100 amino acids huh? and then imagine for the protein to take uh the shape because the folding huh? you have to go through the minimal energy huh? imagine it has only three possibilities huh? actually there are many more just an example so then the number of calculations you have to make is 3 to the power of 100 the total huh? when, when the nascent protein comes up huh? to take that thing huh? you have to go through so to if you assume even 10 to the power of 19 uh, 10 to the power of 13 minus 13 second per operation see it is 5 into 10 to the power of 47 operation this time takes you to the 20, 10 to the power of 27 years mean to do all this just one protein you know many proteins are even thousands of amino acids whereas in practice in the cell it takes less than a second now how <laughs> it is taking less than a second with what kind of uh, you know so that is a big challenge you know so that's why he called it as a is a paradox we know we cannot understand it takes us this many years whereas it happens in less than a second so it's a paradox so we have a solution to that so solution uh is that if you take in a three dimension this is what i am saying is if you if you compute like for example 300 nucleic acid uh, two choices it is 2 to the power 300 10 to the power 90 in this kind of operation 2 to the power 6.67 6.67 then if you process to 6 7 in each dimension simultaneously at 2 to the power of operation then it will take only 0.3 seconds which is practical so that means we are showing that it has to operate in a space independent na no? space independent huh? so that's what it will come out later on you will see um, so now we these, these are all um the madhvacharya has established certain things like upadana nimitta karana huh? for any actions huh? we need to and then the birth existence death and dependency huh? these are the four characteristics of jada huh? non living entity and then janma mrityu uh, uh, then the jnana uh, agnana bandha moksha right ignorance liberation conditioning huh? knowledge ignorance huh? these are the for the living entity huh? this four for the jada and then one who is cause of creation of unlimited insentient possessing four characteristics huh? this lama two and then three for all these entities that is super so huh? now um, now i will show you the mathematics how mm-hmm. this is what ramanujam says you know the an equation for me has no meaning unless represent thought and then for a zero divided by zero he says uh, now the numbers to to give an example that there is software in the so called operations you know 1 2 3 <laughs> is operators and plus minus is is an is like a software okay the operators huh? and then both have to come from the infinity huh? that's the thing uh Okay, okay. Now, uh, 
there is some uniqueness you know man made and then nature and then time validity stability and control uh, vedic perspective now man made for example mac address is there ip social security pnr phone what i'm saying is we will not find two vehicles having the same registration number do we if we have a lot problem like that two houses having same address we will not you know so this is a we make these things for accountability you know for us. so in the same way in the nature if you look at the fingerprint right snowflake uh, the uh, the leaves iris dna you know even the these are all unique i think most of you understand that you know uh, then uh, memory required what i'm saying is there is a there is a relationship between the consciousness uh, uh, the memory and the uniqueness that's why i'm talking e- each one uh, and where in this memory there is a memory paradox now we calculated the memory like uh, i'll give an example um do you have a mobile or something uh, yeah yeah See, for example, um, I cannot do, you know, speak on this. So what I'm saying is, we have, um, yeah. see, th- this mobile is there, right? You can see. Huh? Let us say or do one, one small project, you know, suppose, you, you know, what I want to do is, I, I want to go to pick up this object huh, by a robot. Huh? and then hand it over to the another robot right now to pick up this the robot has a little hand huh? and it has a uh, camera and then someone is directing it right right you, you understand then he picks up one robot is picking up right and that handing over to the another robot which has the hand and then another camera to it right like this right and one once once it picks up on leaves right see to do this if you are an engineer it takes lot of effort <laughs> lot of software and uh, coordination once it picks up on leaves right right it need two cameras and guidance now i don't even look at it you see i don't even look at it any any of you can do it see yeah so what i'm saying now i'm not even looking at it now how it is being done see what i'm saying so there is equivalently so much software is already in us understand uh uniqueness of the sound we, we also have a uniqueness of sound you know so uh with that with that we come to this uh, huge memory how much that memory is it is about uh, 25 tons of semiconductor <laughs> equivalent to wall <laughs> wall <laughs> human brain must be huh? somewhere in the body human body now this is you know how much it will be this is equivalent to all the servers main frame uh, desktop power, um, all the computers in this country with all the memory pen drives everything including this country will not come to our estimate is like 100 billion terabyte one man one person one person now the question is you can understand no one can deny this much memory equal and memory is needed now the the weight of that memory will be under uh, lakhs of tons what is the weight of the human body and that too it will only in the brain 3 pounds 90% water 150 grams so per gram it comes to about 1 lakh terabyte per gram so which is beyond even nano <laughs> nano technology and all that now so now where is that memory and also as the memory goes up the speed clock speed also goes up you can look at our history right we were talking megahertz you know now you know ah gigahertz so this if we calculate equivalent uh, clock speed it will go in roof of this <laughs> temple so it's a paradox now where it can be it has to be outside the brain there is no way he cannot deny the exi- you know, am- amount of memory needed but it is not possible in this brain so it has to be outside that's why we are saying that is the proof for the 
Sukshmadeya, living software. That is, uh, uh, plus the uh, other thing. You know. Now, we, this is, so we are calling this a Pradhima memory packing paradox. Huh? Uh, this has to reside outside. You know, there is no other way around. Huh? Now, consciousness, you know, uh, levels of consciousness, evolution of natural uh, uh, memory, relationship of memory and uniqueness. And the, so, the Brahman cannot be non-differentiated. See, this is because the, the Mayavadis uh, get into this. Unless we understand this Pakka, it will be in difficulty, you know. So, they say it is non-differentiated. But the non-differentiated existence of cannot be proved because we just proved that everything is unique. There are no two identical electrons within the creation, actually. In Pauli exclusive principle, it says, no, there are no two identical electrons within an atom. There are no two identical atoms. Because at least two, elect two atoms, worst case, cannot occupy the same position. So at least the position is different. So then where is two identical things? So then how can you say it is, you can find a non-differentiated object? Understand? So, that's thrown out. Then, perception does not reveal merely existence. They say, oh, perception existence. Then consciousness, existence cannot be one. Huh? Then consciousness is not always self-luminous and therefore is not self proved Consciousness is not eternal and one. Huh? Self is not pure consciousness, but the knower. You know? But the knower, this is important. Huh? It's essential consciousness and it has also as an attribute. Then the knower is not a product of ignorance. Huh? The I knower persists even in deep sleep and release. The individual soul is a part of Brahman. Absolute truth is Krishna also non-dual existence. Three aspects. And this is what we are uh, proving to this. Now the level of uh, five levels. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with you know, consciousness. Uh, so I will not go into this. And, uh, no. no. <laughs> Otherwise it will not be. So anyway it is there. See the corresponding, uh, the yoga, they call about the annamaya kosha, vijnanamaya, manomaya, uh, pranamaya, uh, anandam. Uh. So this we can link it to those five uh, levels of consciousness. Uh. Uh, the Achyajita, uh, Sankujita, Mukalita, the examples given here, you know. The Achyajita is like stones and trees, you know, they have consciousness. Yeah? We have Gurudev speaks in uh, Jaiva Dharma, you know. Uh, bees, birds, these are all Pranamekusha, uh, Sankujita, uh, uh, Mukulita Vikasita, Purna Vikasita. It's a consciousness. Now, in other words, it's, a, it's, a, it's like, suppose you build an object, you, in the software, you know, you have a lower level, higher, you know, middle and uh, super, you know, it's like that. The living entity is having this kind of uh, software. Then, the example is manifest in living soft, in protein fold, pillar taxi, PR paradox, baby down languages, migration of our technology, bad extraordinary, and the, Practically, we can say all, oh, and we can explain all unexplainables from this model, okay? This is what it is, you know? All, you know, nothing is left out. That's why this model. Like, uh, for example, if you take a mRNA, mRNA, what it is is, we have a, like in the previous slide I was showing you, in the nucleus, there is a uh, DNA, right? What it does is, it makes a copy and then that copy comes out uh, into the cytoplasm and from there the... Uh, uh, like this, so, so see any computer, everybody knows there is a R disk, right? R disk where the pr program resides and then when you start the using the word for example, a copy of that is made into the RAM and there you work on it and it gets messed up then anyway when you power down, anyway it's gone. But the 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 hardware, the, the, in the hard disk, that is not touched, okay? Same way, the, the DNA is not touched in the nucleus, but when a copy is made in the mRNA, and that's what being touched. And um, now, uh, if you, uh, 
I have a video, but I will show you the the real video. Maybe we'll move into that. I think. Uh, see, in this one, um, the this shows what is happening inside a cell. That the cell manufactures these little uh, walking machines. They're called kinesins that take these huge loads that would that would challenge an ant in relative size. You run the uh, the movie, please. But these machines that power the inside of the cells are really quite amazing, and they really are the basis of all life. But because all of these machines. Uh, interact with each other, they pass information to each other, they cause different things to happen inside the cell, and the cell will actually manufacture the parts that it needs on the fly from information that's brought from the nucleus by uh, molecules that read the genes, and no life from the smallest life to everybody here would be possible without these little micro machines. In fact, it would it would really, in the absence of these machines, uh, have made the attendance here, Chris, really quite sparse. These are actually happening inside a cell. So fast, amazing. Look at this. This is the FedEx delivery guy of the cell. This little guy is called a kinesin, and he pulls a sack that's full of brand new manufactured proteins to wherever it's needed in the cell, whether it's to a membrane, whether it's to an organelle, whether it's to build something or repair something. And each of us has about 100,000 of these things running around right now inside each one of your 100 trillion cells. So no matter how lazy you feel, you're not really intrinsically doing nothing. <laughs> so what I want you to do when you go home is think about this and think about how powerful our cells are and think about some of the things that, that we're learning about cellular uh, mechanics. And once we figure out all that's going on, and, and believe me, we know almost a percent of what's going on. Once we figure out what's going on, we're really going to be able to have a lot of control over what we do with our health with what we do with future generations, how long we're gonna live, and hopefully we'll be able to use this to discover more truth and more beauty. Now, see, that is, we saw is a video of inside a cell, maybe 10 micrometer, very smart. You know, they've somehow they developed capturing. Now imagine, we were able to see that because of the light. Now in, the, in our body, is there any light inside? We have ten, you know, un, about hundred billion, uh, hundred, um, uh, hundred trillion cells are there. Hundred trillion cells. And each one is in basically darkness. But how come all these things are going on? You see? So you can imagine that. But all are harmonious. So what is that field, you know? Even for example here, huh? see, the, this is the stages. Uh, uh, this is, okay. So in this case, you see the scale is already there. It's, a, it's about five millimeter, right? Five millimeter. Huh? You get the idea, huh? The stages of the baby forming. Now look at the symmetry also, you know? The baby doesn't have one leg bigger, one is smaller. <laughs> now, who is telling, oh, it should be, <laughs> you know, uh, like that. And in this case, there are about 250,000 neurons being manufactured every minute. We'll come to that, you know. So, it's an amazing thing. What it is, is, the, the, at this stage, this fetus doesn't have uh, the, the connection from the mother. Uh, and it is building its own brain. Understand? So, who, who it is building? So, the, the software, the Sukhma Deha is building it. And for example, you can see in this one, how from the conception, uh, this is... Uh, 
fertilized egg or zygote begins dividing. By about four days after fertilization, a solid ball of cells called a morula forms. The cells continue to multiply, and by day five, the cells separate into two groups, the inner cell mass, which will become the embryo, and an encompassing sac called the trophoblast, which will develop into the placenta. Trophoblast cells secrete fluid, creating a cavity, the blastocele, with the inner cell mass at one end. At this stage, the mammalian embryo is called a blastocyst. The cells of the inner cell mass eventually form two layers, the epiblast and the hypoblast. The epiblast is thought to contain the cells that will generate the actual embryo. Critical to the early development of all vertebrate embryos is the process of gastrulation, which occurs between days 13 and 19. Gastrulation results from the movement of cells toward the midline and then forward along the midline forming a groove called the primitive streak. The end result is the production of the three primitive cell layers, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. The nervous system develops from the outer layer, called the ectoderm. As this cell layer thickens, it becomes a distinct epithelium called the neural plate. Uneven rates of cell division form a groove called the neural groove that will become the midline of the embryo. Ridges of ectoderm continue to bulge on both sides of the midline. The tops of the neural ridges eventually come together, forming the neural tube. The interior of the neural tube becomes the fluid-filled cerebral ventricles of the brain, the central canal of the spinal cord, and the passages that connect them. By about 24 days, the three major subdivisions of the brain are discernible. These include the prosencephalon, or forebrain, including the telencephalon and diencephalon, the mesencephalon or midbrain, and the rhombencephalon or hindbrain. The progenitor cells of the neural tube are known as neural precursor cells or neural stem cells. This represents the first stage of neural development, neurogenesis, when undifferentiated cells undergo mitotic divisions to produce either new stem cells or neuroblasts that will eventually differentiate into neurons. The cells undergo a stereotyped pattern of cell movements as they progress through the mitotic cycle. Eventually, the dividing precursor cells form a closely packed layer of cells called the ventricular zone. Eventually, some cells leave the ventricular zone, forming a second layer of cells called the marginal zone. Later, an intermediate layer develops as the wall thickens. Cells in the intermediate zone will then begin to differentiate into both neurons and glia. As the number of cells increases during the period of neurogenesis, the newly formed cells must move even greater distances. The massive movement of nerve cells to establish distinctive cell populations represents the second stage of neural development, cell migration. Cells do not move in an aimless, haphazard manner. Cells in the developing cortex move along the surface of a particular type of glial cell called radial glia. Like spokes of a wheel, these radial glia cells extend from the inner to the outer surfaces of the emerging nervous system. The radial glial cells act as guide wires, and the newly formed cells creep along their processes. <coughs> Once cells reach their appropriate destination, the third stage of neural development begins, differentiation. At this point, the cells begin to use or express particular genes. This allows the cell to acquire the distinctive appearance and functions of neurons characteristic of that particular region. As the process of differentiation proceeds, the fourth stage of neural development begins, process outgrowth. The biggest change in brain cells early in life is the extensive growth of axons and dendrites and the proliferation of synapses. The neural environment also greatly influences nerve cell differentiation. 
In vertebrates, young neural cells seem to have the capacity to become many varieties of neurons. And the particular type of neuron that a cell becomes depends on where it happens to be and what its neighboring cells are. Um, I don't know you understood this or not, but what it is is in the mother's womb there are in the, about 100 billion neurons by the time the baby is born, okay, nine months. And then in the early stage 250,000 neurons being produced per minute. Imagine, two and a half lakhs and they all have to be arranged. It's like imagine in a computer, right? Resistors, capacitors, ICs and all that, right? You have the components. Components are being manufactured and you have to put them and you have to connect them, see? So the neurons are being different kinds, you know? Earlier, later on, they take on their uh, different uh, uh, activity huh? and they are get connected and you think without any diagram they get connected and it is dark inside, <laughs> right? <laughs> There is no light there. How it is being connected, you know, in that, uh, that is the, that's what we are talking, huh? uh, That's why the Sukshma Deha is essential. Sukshma Deha, which goes, you know, which does not, this Sukshma Deha doesn't need the light of this, okay? It doesn't need this mundane light. It actually is also uh, like a space, like later on we will see, it is, uh, it doesn't need. That's why Krishna says, there, there is no light of moon or uh, sun or the, uh, you know, the stars or the, even the Vidyut, you know, it is a different kind of light. So, Sukshma Deha, as, a, as it sees, actually it is space independent, you understand? It is space independent, it does not depend on this light and it is controlling. We have 100 billion, 100 trillion cells, you know, 90 trillion cells are all being controlled at the same time. I don't know how much, how many people can appreciate this. Jai Jai Sri Radha, you know, Jai Jai, jai, jai Radha Ramana. You know, that's... Um, now also, all the signal to do our activity does not come from the brain. Then where it should be coming? That's the example I'm giving, next one, you know. Couple of them. You can see, for example, uh, this one, I will skip it, you just to get, get an idea. You can think of so, so many activities like this, dancing and all that, you know. Uh, all those movements, you know, our eye movement does not coming from the brain. That's what I'm saying. See, this, this fast movements, you know, coordination, it cannot be coming from the brain. Okay, we can show the by calculation. So, where it is coming from? It has to be from the sukshma deha. That's why we say, for example, this is an amazing thing. We say, oh, yeah, you know by heart? Do we say, you know by brain? <laughs> you know, uh, so like that, the heart is the, is the actual the location of the sukshma deha. No, Atma Paramatma is there like that. Huh? Uh, now, see, in the 1828, there was uh, one comment was, all embryos, fish, amphibious, reptile, birds, and mammals, are almost identical the first developments, gigot, blastula, gastula. Only later on, special characteristics of the class, order, family, general species, success appear. Now, ask a question, oh, wait a minute. In the beginning, they look same, no matter what is the source, but what is the difference? <laughs> you see, <laughs> what is the difference? What is it guiding to become a human? What is guiding to become a uh, fish? Don't you think there is something? <laughs> so, that is the sukshma deha. Huh? Now, of course, the language. You know, language is another thing. How we develop, you know, like multiple languages. Babies start learning. How is it? You know, um, original language. Uh, plants and creation. Hmm? Saptamo Mukya, you know, there uh, in the seventh creation, this, uh, see the Brahma, Lord creates the six stages of creation, right? And the, from the seventh uh, to tenth, uh, Brahma creates. Uh, uh, in this one, 
uh, you, we call it as pelotaxi, for example, see the leaf here, see there are different stages of leaf, see how, how uniform it is and then his position and that position is different, see, it is rotating gradually. Huh? So if you look at from the center, see how, how nicely it is arranged there, so that the sunlight uh, can uniformly, uh, uh, and also the rain, when it rains, it falls like that, you know. See, look at the arg, you know, the arrangement. Don't you see any pattern there? Uh, look at this. And also even the teeth, for example, even these ratios, you know, different ratios within a butterfly, what you call the golden ratio, the phase, the uniqueness. Uh, uh, now look at this, uh, uh, this complex leaf. See, this is one leaf, you see? <laughs> and uh, it's amazing. <laughs> now, who is telling, hey, wait a minute, I have to do here, I have to do here. And it is, uh, you know, <laughs> so the, in other words, this plant also has a sukshma deha, telling it. Now, sukshma deha, this plant, for example, start from a tiny right, 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 seed, right? It grows up. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, like this, this, this golden ratio is, is actually 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1, you know, the reciprocal. There's a fee also like that, you know. Uh, see, look at this. Huh? It is formation. Then, what I was trying to say is, see, this tree, started with a small tree, now it become big. How many? Lakhs and lakhs of leaves are there. Now those lakhs and lakhs of leaves are all symmetrical, they are all small, small, small. Who is guiding it? So it should be the sukshma deha, and sukshma deha is not becoming from the small to the big. You see, that is the paradox. Sukshma deha must be independent of the space. It is accessing all the leaves same time. You understand? And it doesn't need light to see them. And this, this thing will not come in the way of looking for, you know, for the sukshma there. You understand? These trees, you know, the branches and all that does not come in the way of observation. So that's why it is beyond the space, you know, beyond the space and the light. That's how Krishna is controlling us. He has put a sukshma deha living software so that he can actually control all these cells, you know. And that's how it's in the foreground and the background. In the background when we grow up, he gives a, you know, he builds an interface. Like in the brain we are talking about, the human brain, the baby fetus, he building the uh, interface and then he hands over certain functions to us. And he stays always in the background and controlling. And we, like for example, we take prasadam, we put it into the tongue, right? <laughs> right? After putting on the tongue, we feel, oh, it's salty, it's sweet and all. After that, do we have any control over that? What happens? How it gets digested, you know? How it has, <laughs> you have no control. So actually, there are three aspects to it, you know? One becomes, the gross comes out as a malamutra. The middle part goes to become blood, bones and all that. The third part, actually the most essential, the subtle part goes to our mind, the word we speak and then the prana. That's why we have to, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll get into that, you know, more detail. Um, the, the aspects of it. So now the technology of bats, okay, <laughs> this really blows them out. Huh? The bat can determine where the object is, how big it is, in what direction moving, bat can tell. Huh? These are an amazing thing. They are, they, are, they are telling that it is beyond the brain, capacity of the brain of the bears to do this. Huh? Uh, they themselves are saying. So, who it is doing? It is the software, you know. Uh, you can see this is an amazing video. Huh? It's only one minute. Huh? Millions of creatures live in perpetual darkness. Every night, they leave in hordes search of food. They go very, very high. 
they quickly disappear from the view of the naked eye, and if you take binoculars, they quickly disappear from the view of the binoculars. And one of the real obvious questions that presents itself to you as you watch this is, you know, why are they going up there? What, what, what's up there for them? Why are they going to such high altitudes? These are Mexican free-tailed bats. In the winter months, the bats live near Mexico City. But early each summer, over 100 million of them migrate to large caves in South Texas. The largest of the caves is Bracken, home to 20 million bats. The walls of Bracken Cave squirm and breathe. In mid-June, the female bats give birth, and the population of Bracken Cave temporarily doubles to approximately 40 million. Now, how they can find To improve its machine sonar, the Navy is turning to animals that use sonar naturally. James Simmons studies the extraordinary ability of bats to see with sound. What we're interested in is how the bat uses sonar to see objects in space. Bats can navigate around obstacles at night, chase and catch insects, even when they are near objects of a similar shape. There are some kinds of bats that will actually fly into the vegetation searching for insects and can find them in the presence of this enormous background of echoes from the branches and the leaves. They treat this as easy. The bat's sonar is at such a high frequency that humans cannot hear it. This bat detector lowers the frequency so the bat's sounds become audible. Each time the bat makes one of these sounds, it moves the ears in this back and forth pattern, scanning. Our experience tells us what the bat does is impossible, and yet the bats fly around and do this all the time. By studying the extraordinary ability of animals, we learn ways to improve our own inventions. What it shows is... <laughs> It's funny, it's how, how they are telling, they do not understand because it is so fast, you know, the processing is amazing, you know. So it has to be outside the brain, you know. Now, another example here, um, the, in the ants, huh? uh, there are two of them, um, you can see it becomes very obvious in this one. Huh? Now, th this, this is talking, this ant, you see this is one millimeter, this scale is, you know, so tiny, you know, a oh, couple of millimeter bug is talking about, it has a gear in it, you know. Uh, Mechanically interacting gears are always thought of as a man-made invention used in our bikes and our cars. But what we've shown is that a small plant-sucking bug evolved gears long, long ago okay. and uses these gears to mechanically synchronize the very rapid jumping movements of its legs. This is the first demonstration of interacting gears being used by any animal. The jump is really very rapid indeed. It takes off at a velocity of about five meters per second, that's equivalent to about 12 miles per hour, mm -hmm. and it accelerates in less than a millisecond. So it experiences enormous g-forces as it takes off, about 500 or even 700 g. I first became aware of these bugs when I was in the garden of my friend and colleague Peter Brownig in Aachen in Germany. He has a quite wild garden with lots of ivy growing in it. They're a very specific sort of bug. They only like to eat ivy. And so I spent a huge amount of time trying to look on all the ivy bushes in Cambridge for these bugs and couldn't find them. Then my five-year-old grandson, Max, came to the rescue. He found these bugs in his garden. And he rushed up to me one day and said, Granddad, I found these plant hoppers in my garden. Here they are. 
And so we brought them back to the lab here in Cambridge, and that's when I did the experiment of showing that the cogwheels were actually engaging with each other. The high-speed images that we have to take of these bugs to reveal these very brief events takes us into a completely different world. Two artists in London. <coughs> See, um, what he's saying is, uh, this is Cambridge done, the, the, it's a tiny bug and it has a built-in gears as you saw, you know. Be, why? Because when the, like in the, in the airport, right, when the flight takes off, imagine if the two tires are a little different, one leaves uh, earlier compared to the other, what will happen? The fly, you know, the plane will go off like this, you know. So, same thing. In this case, that bug, tiny bug, that's why it has that uh, gears. Now, why it has gear? Because the brain, the signal cannot, uh, it is so fast, he's talking about one millisecond, it's, you know. Uh, the brain signal cannot come that fast, you know. This is their conclusion. So, that's from where it is coming, if it is not from the brain. You know? So, like that. And in this one, to show that the Paramatma, you know, the, you can look at this. The, this is um, a ants, how they are building um, a bridge in the Amazon. It's an amazing thing, you know, you can see. Creatures that were once living on the forest floor now need to find other ways of getting around during the flood. The busy life of a fire ant colony has to carry on regardless. See, they are building a uh, boat. Answer. By linking legs, the worker ants create a living raft, supported by the surface tension of the water. Free now to move through the forest, these vicious stingers make the most of the flood. Use it to spread to other parts of the Amazon. On this lifeboat, the queen and her young need to be kept safe and dry. How harmonious we are working. There's no getting away from hungry fish. Once in the open river, they are at the mercy of the current and unpredictable waves. Lucky enough to hit land, the soggy ants disentangle and disembark, unloading the family as they go. After a little toweling off, the worker ants soldier on carefully guiding their queen to safety. See, this raises a lot of questions. You can see um, the boat was actually all the ants, right? And how this shape and uh, the coordination and um, uh, it's an amazing thing. You know, it has to be something um, like it in our own body, we have 90 trillion cells. Here, maybe one million, you know, these uh, ants, how they are coordinating. So that's, uh, that shows that the Paramatma uh, must be guiding, otherwise coordination, you know. 
Uh, now, in contrast to this, you can see uh, the uh, Princeton, uh, Harvard University built a small uh, bug, uh, small bee, rover bee, they call, they call it rover bee, how difficult it is uh, uh, when we try to duplicate it, you know. This is the smallest flying robot ever built. It's the size of a postage stamp and weighs about as much as a small snowflake. Its wings, which beat 120 times per second, are thinner than human hair. Power and flight control commands are transmitted from a computer to the RoboBee via tether. But Mike Smith from Harvard University's Micro Robotics Lab hopes to design an autonomous version a robo-bee that can fly on its own, even though the technology needed does not yet exist. We still have yet to um, bring on board um, sensing, um, uh, some computational intelligence, a uh, brain, if you will. And then one of the big ones, of course, is power. And so these are some of the challenges that we're uh, looking downstream at. Smith says it will take 10 years before the technology has been miniaturized to the scale needed to make free-flying robo-bees functional. But he says the researchers are making strides in other areas, such as mass production. The engineers can now print and assemble hundreds of RoboBees at the same time by applying the same pop-up design principles as those used in a child's storybook. The researchers print plates that can be aligned and popped into place to form a completed robot. And the idea is that we have uh, on the RoboBee 137 of these linkages and so as you separate these plates one from the other, these linkages, just like the children's pop-up book, force this robo be into position. And once in position, Smith sees a day when teams of robo-bees can be deployed to replicate the behavior of their biological cousins. Any one bee might know a little about his surroundings, uh, perhaps what's sort of right in the general area, but she would utilize a sort of a colony mentality to sort of pass the word, if you will. You could envision perhaps a robo-bee uh, that has found something, maybe dropping down and expending the rest of its battery, acting like a beacon, or perhaps going back to the hive and then passing uh, back and forth the information through a more of a centralized intelligence. Intelligence that can be used in search and rescue missions or military surveillance. Smith says robo-bee swarms can even be deployed to pollinate crops and flowers, a futuristic vision of a technology inspired by nature. Now, the, see, the Bhagavatam, 11th canto, talks about a lot of mystic, uh, that uh, we have perfection. There are actually 27 of them. Huh? Now, one of them is the smaller than the uh, smallest. Huh? Now, single cell size, 100 mic uh, nanometer, and uh, now, um, uh, to what extent, right, this is a perfection, what extent the human endured with, and what kind of technology we are trying to replace, and then, you know, nanotechnology, you know, greater than the greatest, Banya entry. Now, what we to try to get over is through the bridges, you know, uh, acquire whatever one desires, you know, uh, only upon some experience, you know, like that. Um, like uh, Dura Shravana, Dura Darshana, Agni Stamba, Jala Stamba, these are the, uh, uh, see this, we are uh, talking. Uh, seeing, uh, for example, things far away, uh, birds have better eyesight, telescope, television, satellite, you know. We are trying to, actually, if you look at the whole thing, we are trying to mimic or get over with this, with these Pancha Mahabhutas. Because we have no access to the the mind, you know, we, we do not have. Um, so um, we are trying to same way we can synthesize synthetic software, but not the living software. We do not have access. That's why what we made is we God made the conductor and the insulator. We kind of put the dopants and made it in a. Uh, semiconductor, right, and then we created a capacitance zero and one and that's how we build up the synthetic software, you know. 
So if you look at that, this is a, that, uh, that kind of a thing, you know. Um, then, for example, um, um, remain unconquered by others. You know, see, we, what we do is we uh, dupli you know, duplicity, bodybuilding, defense, alarm systems, you know. <laughs> so, but that's all we can go. But to, to, you can see there's a better way. Once we realize this uh, sukshma deha, what, um, uh, how we can be actually get over with these, uh, you know, a yeah, misdirected uh, way, you know, uh, even the health-wise and all that. Um, now this is to get an idea of the independent of living software because within a cell, huh, how these, uh, uh, the proteins are being uh, done, uh, you can see the um, how the harmony is there within a cell, you know, these little things, uh, ribosomes. Ribosomes begin to translate the sequence into amino acids. Typically, many ribosomes translate the mRNA simultaneously. Each ribosome begins at the five prime end of the mRNA and progresses steadily towards the three prime end. New ribosomes attach to the five prime end at the same rate as the previous ones move out of the way. These multiple initiations allow the cell to make much more protein from a single message than if one ribosome had to complete the task before another could begin. When a ribosome reaches a stop codon, the ribosome and the new protein dissociate from each other and from the mRNA. This electron micrograph depicts a membrane-bound polyribosome from a eukaryotic cell. See, this is 100 nanometer, right? Very tiny, we cannot even see, and those things are happening. And they don't collide each other, and there is no light inside the cell. <laughs> you know, there is no light to see each other, how they are doing it, see, understand? And there is so much harmony, and this is one cell, and there are hundred trillion cells in our own one body, you know. So, so that's why the sukshma deha is so powerful, I will tell you, very powerful. So within this body, see we can access, right? That's why Bhagavad Gita Krishna, right? This uh, kshetra, kshetra jnana, right? And then of course Krishna has control over all other kshetra. Huh? So this becomes very, very clear huh, from this. Um, then, now how do we explain the, <laughs> uh, the evolution kind of thing? Because when we deal with this uh, so-called, uh, you know, professor or whatever, we have to be able to explain them, look, how we are being misguided by the Darwin, you know, so far. But uh, is there any solution? I will tell you there is, you know, um, in this one. Uh, this is a long one, I will make it a short uh, thing, just to get it experiment in which you can test whether evolution will occur in a population of fruit flies. You will test these flies for how long they can go without food before they die, a measure called starvation resistance. In biology, the term population has a specific meaning. It is a group of organisms of the same species living in a particular geographic region, in this case, a cage in your laboratory. How do you measure starvation resistance? In this experiment, you start the clock at the time you remove the food, but not water, from the cage. Fruit flies have tiny bodies that don't hold very large caloric reserves. After a relatively short time, they begin to die. Using a graph, you can look at the number of flies compared to how many hours they survived before starvation. From this preliminary study, you observe that the average starvation resistance in this population is 20 hours. This marks your first step in using the scientific method, observation. Now you come up with the hypothesis that fruit flies can indeed be selected to have a greater resistance to starvation. This means that you're testing whether the population can evolve from one generation to the next. Your prediction is that if the population undergoes selection for starvation resistance, subsequent generations of fruit flies can exceed an average 20 hours of starvation resistance. To conduct the experiment, you begin with a large number of flies in the cage. 
The population is actually much larger than depicted here, with each fly representing 500 individuals. Therefore, the population consists of about 5,000 flies. As before, you begin by removing the food. Note that the flies in this experiment are highly variable in their traits for starvation resistance, and that these variations exist even before our experiment begins. The experiment simply allows us to identify which of these flies have the traits for the strongest starvation resistance. After 80% of the flies have died, you save the remaining 20% by adding food back to the cage. In this way, you've selected only the most starvation resistant fruit flies. On average, this first generation has a starvation resistance of 20 hours. Will the next generation be able to go longer without food? Recall that these two remaining flies actually represent 1,000 flies from the population, and that this population still retains a lot of variability for starvation resistance. After the surviving flies eat, they'll have the energy to reproduce. The females will... What are you saying? Because the long one, what is missing here is... Um, see, for example, you know, like uh, they go up to the almost 160 hours. In other words, they were small and they become big, caloric, you know. So they say it is because of the uh, gene modification. What is missing in their argument is, we know, suppose, when, when suppose we are put into that situation, starvation, what happens? We feel pain about it. Hey, you know, unnecessarily food was taken out, you know. So, uh, the sukshma deha, when the, when the, it's a hardware goes, right? The su sukshma deha is there. So that is reborn into these next situation. See? The, the reborn. So that's how that uh, duration is becoming longer and longer. That's what is missing. That's what is missing. And also the desire of the pair, you know, the, the parent. So, because the transmission from the one species, one generation to the another is through the eggs. You saw that, right? But what is missing is this, this software part of it. That's what they are not finding it out. So what we are saying is, true, they got this uh, trait, what you call uh, this uh, starvation trait, through the software, not through the hardware. You know, for example, uh, in this case, if you take the vacuum tubes, you know, they were big, right? And later on transistors, VLSI, now we have this small one, right? Now, behind this is the, is the living software, right? The idea, right? And then that got into the hardware chain, and then th that we got into a longer battery life, right? Yeah. So same way here also, living software huh, got into the genes and then longer duration. See? So, this part they are missing in the evolution. So, if you bring that back, then, because they are also saying, yeah, the, um, you know, the, there is a commonality, you know, all the things came from the, um, the Kashyapa. You know, we have a better story, you know, actually a complete story. Kashyapa, how with the different wives, he was able to get even the, the trees, you know, the, the birds and all that, you know, that. Then the the dog, you know, <laughs> is a, is an amazing thing. How they can do such an amazing thing uh, without the, the software, you know. Uh, now the, for example, the blind people, huh? uh, what they have is how they read, you know. See, you are blind, right? But only with the senses. Huh? Uh, able to touch and then re read the thing. That is two darts and then three, uh, two darts here, three darts there, you know, uh, like these uh, ASCII codes. It's like uh, 64 uh, things are there. So, uh, don't you need, we think that transformation is done by the genes, you know. <laughs> it's like in the computer, you have a, um, you know, similar thing, right, transformation going on. So, uh, different code in the Braille character huh? uh, that has to have a software, this is what I'm saying. Huh? Now, and the difference between living and synthetic software, you know, reproduce, copy DNA, so many things, you know, uh, minimal. 
but the main thing is is like a space dependency you know the living software uh, has not you know but here synthetic software we network of uh, servers um you know like um, satellites we try to come out with it you know? uh, then living software exists what now how do you say space independent we have shown so many examples okay space independent you know there's only way then it's directs the building living hardware huh? we saw that and then adapt to the environment huh? and then uh, does not get destroyed when living hardware destroyed huh? coordinates and collaborates and then also there is couple of things i did not put it uh, like um, it doesn't need light huh? and also it is self aware what do you mean by self aware if you look at that in our own case suppose i scratch i don't you know i know that i am saying if somebody does scratch i know somebody else right tickling for example we don't get tickled by ourselves do we then uh, so how does <laughs> see the awareness is there self awareness so that is the thing suppose you build a like a sensor uh, like a door entry or that does it know can you able to distinguish whether it is oh the oh wait a minute the owner is coming unless you build what you call a synthetic awareness what we are trying to do with elaborate maybe you can do with a you know recognition and all that synthetic uh, but not the living awareness you know those are the things we uh, are saying uh, now relations and healing now how we can use this hardware byte and a software byte uh, healing deformed effects spontaneous samanda vidhe prayojana now i'll give an example uh this is the time huh? Huh? yeah yeah there is a uh, time is over or is it 15 like uh, what i'm telling is hardware and a software byte huh? uh we will come to that later on because uh, then uh, the chitta and buddhi you now this you see this uh, uh ahankara in the mode of goodness gives the mind a uh, passion in the indriyas and the uh, in the ignorance is the panchama bhuta panchatan mata see how how the mind has control over the panchama bhuta because from the satvik you know that's how uh, there and then in this one you can see uh, what is happening is see this is a one circle right is another circle now if you move individually because two pi r it should end up only here right and this is bigger circle it is coming up here but look that both are traveling to the same distance in other words <laughs> small one also going much larger longer you get the idea so it's a paradox how is it is possible is 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 we can understand it has lot of implications in a spirit in a sense if you are connected with the lord we can go much longer you know that's what i'm saying huh? uh and also one to one uh, one to one is uh, mapping is there that's why you see it it goes but if you take the individual you should not go up to this point you should end up here right so uh, that aspect that's why we need to be connected we are not independent understand you know uh if we uh there is a thing what do we have now science and bhakti see bhakti starts with faith science starts with doubt you know there are laws of you know very amazing laws are there laws of science of our certain experience and no god but science has no means to know him you know subject to independence like that and then um, we saw the manifestation links of atma brahman you know um, the living software so many examples atma silk worm be brahman fully actually epr paradox we did not go the only way to explain ex- explain that is that we have to bring in the brahman all around otherwise it is there is no way of knowing which is uh, uh, you know the spin one is up one is down like that paramatma bhagwan and bhagwan of course there is a eto uh, vai uh, um, like in dwarka you know they found this thing huh? in the um, arivamsa talks about 
a um, like a like in the computer like data centers you cannot go unless we are authorized right same way krishna gave this kind of uh, id to all the citizens of dwarka and it is described in aryams and they found one huh? and then this is uh, ram setu you know we, we have scripture and then you can see the bridge here and this is india huh? Uh, Rameshwar, uh, uh, this is Rameshwar, like a shank, uh? and this is entire Lanka, you see, entire Lanka, in that scale, this bridge is visible, uh? this is Nasa picture, taken on 94, 312, and the uh, 745 morning, uh? Uh, 62 satellite, you know, so it shows that the, uh, what we described in the Shastra, is, you know, is, Leela took place, and then this is kishkinda uh, karnataka is there so many other things uh, narsingha dev and then we have a lot of things uh, then vede ramayana chaiva purana bharata tata a a adavanti madhya ari sarvatra giyate vedic literature include ramayana purana mahabharata from the very beginning uh, middle and the end uh, they always glorify only ari sri film similarly we look at in a different perspective we find only the glories of lord hari in all math science biology and everything this is uh, uh hari krishna 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 so any questions uh, we have some time. yeah ఏకమైవ పరం తత్వం ఏకం అద్వితీయం గాడ్ ఈస్ వన్ ఓకే ఇట్స్ నాట్ టు అండ్ సి దట్స్ వై ఈవన్ ఇయర్ వీ హ్యావ్ చైతన్య మహాపురుగు రాధాకృష్ణ ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ అట్ ది వాట్ భక్తి సిద్ధాంత సరస్వతి హ్యాస్ సాడ్ అవర్ ఆరాధ్య హ్యాస్ టు బి వన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ so for a leela they have taken like that you know um i don't know what you are saying here is the limitations see we are we are we are limited you understand god has put into this prison into the limited the space is limited you understand i don't know you got the idea or not the space is limited right to control that is controlling from the mind which is made from the sattvic ahankar that is still ahankar understand so we have to go obviously be beyond uh, sattvic ahankar also right uh, karana uh, uh, deha you know then only get to the uh, but we are trying to we explain to the scientists look you have to go beyond they are into the matter as you are saying right no 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 to controlling this this matter is from how we can control transcending the matter that's why the independent of space we is is a different concept and then also you don't need the light that software does not depend on this light you know it can access that's why the mind you know right mind is so fast but even faster than that you know that's why how how krishna able to contain all all of that because he has a control over everything right without his mercy nothing nothing more so that has, that he has that power that we can glimpse from this analysis at least to me that i have understood okay it is possible how because in the entire this universe can pop into say even a small like a point we cannot really say point but because of lack of words the words is limited you know it's a maya the words the language itself is maya you know 
the only we can understand and we cannot express but we what to do we are stuck with this my language so we we try to ex- that's why you have to experience eventually it back, comes back to that our sadhana right that's why our sadhana has to be there uh, uh, and tomorrow we can you know today um, anyway you get the idea of what i'm saying yeah then yeah Yeah, what, what is missing is, see this is basically again same point, they are into matter, matter, that's all they can see, <laughs> right? See one time there was a uh, question of uh, Sir C. V. Raman, you know, with uh, uh, Bhakti Daita Madhu Maharaj, you know, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati, they wanted to bring <laughs> Sir C. V. Raman. Sir C. V. Raman said, no, 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 unless I see, uh, like, you know, can you show your garden? Then he was, uh, Bhakti Daita Madhu Maharaj said, wait a minute. There is things outside this wall, you know, can you see it? No, but how do you, you know? So he was telling, I have to build up the instrument, then they have to train up like that. So basically, the, the sciences, they are not seeing, that's why within themselves there is an argument. See, nobody is, you know, agreeing with their thing, you know, there are so many things. So what we are saying is we are contributing to that Look, there is an another missing software component to it. If you bring that, understand, the story will be uh, uh, pakka, you know, that's what, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I see. See, the reason, the reason why I am calling is, yeah, now every small boy understands, hey, wait a minute, computer is there, computer is hardware, software, operator, network, admin. even a small boy understand, right? Can the computer work with only hardware? Everybody says, no. Can it work only with the software? They say, no, right? And which is strongest? Software, they say. If software is visible, suppose you install software into the computer, before installation and after installation, you think there is a change in the weight of the computer? No. <laughs> you see, those concepts they can understand. From that angle, I am calling this as a living software in, 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 you know, opposing to synthetic software. And this living software include the mind, uh, intelligence, uh, ankar, chitta, atma, paramatma, you know. So that's it. But, but if you present it to the scientist and all this, they get, hey, wait a minute, we'll get lost. But if you bring it as a living software, synthetic software, they will listen to us. Understand? They will listen to us. When they listen to that, when their awareness from the consciousness, from Achyadita, Sankuchita, you know, maybe they are coming to Mukulita. <laughs> then we can say bring other components. Understand? So initially I will not talk about the soul, Atma and all that. But let us get to that. Wait, wait a minute. There is a software, living software. They are, they are telling it. You saw the bats. They are saying, yes, wait a minute. We don't understand how this working can be happening in their brain. You know. And the, 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 that is, uh, he's just uh, fly going off in one millisecond. They say, you know, the brain cannot uh, enough to, you know, signal. So they are talking. With these examples we can show, yeah, wait a minute. There is something. Memory calculation, you say, you see? Memory calculation, there has to be beyond this body, right? So, with these examples, we can clearly ex- establish that there is a living software. Point number one. That's the main focus, really. Because we are devotees, I am bringing the other aspect. Otherwise, from the scientific community, I don't even bring that at all. Otherwise, there is confusion. We have to bring them to the, that level. Understand, hey, wait a minute, as a computer, as a software? Same way, this is the most complex, must have a living software. Once you bring to that point, then it all becomes very easy, you know. And then, wait a minute, which came first? <laughs> living software, <laughs> same cycle, right? In a program, you write, for example, beginning and the end. Then back, jump back to end, beginning, right? It is a software, that's how you read. Same thing you see, everything in this cycle. You have a mango, 
right? Mango tree needs a seed and then to get the seed you need a tree which came first, you know? Unless somebody puts in, in like a software, you know, uh, engineer. So from that angle I'm calling that, you know, um, yeah, living software, you know. But if you come up with a better word, I will be... <laughs> I c Yeah, yeah, bhakti, like abhideya pravajana sammandha. See, the way to realize actually by Gurudev's mercy, otherwise it's not possible. And uh, it's not possible. And we can see this as an implication. It is space independent. Try to understand that. It is an amazing concept. And then the light. And it has an awareness. You understand? Awareness. Now, we, so people are actually in the computer. They are trying to write some programs called uh, self-learning software like that. You know, these are all coming. See, there is nothing new under the sun. You know? <laughs> Krishna, imagine. See, try to understand. This, this will alone will blow anybody's mind. Imagine 100 billion terabyte in our buddhi, which is no weight, right? And it is if all the memory in the entire this country cannot come to one human person. That alone is enough to blow anybody's mind if you can convince that. And that's what it is, you know. So, yeah. Time is up. Mm. No, 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 no. Mind is part of it. Right, 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 right. It is an interface. The, see, the very presence of God, what it makes powerful. Not by, without Him. It is, by His very presence, it is working. You know, by His very presence. See, that's why the persistence, we didn't get the time to see. If you cut a leaf, for example, how oh, it leaves for a while. Scientists think, oh yeah, yeah this actually is a persistence. Because the, the influence, See, the influence of the presence, like when we come near the presence of Gurudev, you know, that persists for a long time, you know, its influence persists for a long time. Um, yeah. So basically, you are, are you denying the uh, theory with the evolution or are you agree with it? No, 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 wait a minute. It is, it, see, if you see properly, it is got vaporized already. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, what to speak of uh, denying it doesn't uh, it's incomplete it's incomplete and inconsistent okay I can challenge you on anybody on that because you see the Cambridge okay you see the the scientists of the Navy you see not one or two so many examples okay so many examples they go against it and what we are proposing is to make their theory complete which is making that, which back, comes back to the Vedic model and nothing more than that. Understand? See, basically, uh, what I believe is that there is, there is evolution in that sense, but God also makes things. The reason is because the whole universe is very difficult to understand. And uh, maybe a time will come away a thousand years from now when man has created <coughs> See, sorry, it will bother you, okay? That is not possible. You must be a fool number one to come to that. I will tell you why. Don't get it wrong, okay? First of all, try to understand that if you understand that living software is space independent, what do we have, understand, to, to achieve that? It is not in our hand. Try to understand that. Understanding this will make us humble, humility. Okay? Try to accept bhakti. That's the only way to understand. You know, get a... Otherwise, it's space independent. Imagine, in the brain, understand... Okay, try to understand this. When the embryo building 250,000 neurons per minute. Understand? Two and, a, two, uh, two and a half lakh neurons per minute. Can you imagine that? In a small space, 
couple of you know square cubic meter and who is guiding it all the small small things can be connected dark there you think you can build it one no no try to understand can you build your own brain no what progress for example i showed you that they are trying to they try to say see don't give this post data chat try, try to realize by the time you understand you are aging is it not you are aging is it not all of us don't get don't get it now what is life what is continuing no no wait a minute after you know after you know artificial insemination of what you created those uh, these genes there no the did you created the eggs there you took the egg and then took it outside what did you do say no 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 say you must be I, i'm sorry say i will tell you every seed as a software okay you know how i will tell you suppose We we cannot see. For example, this battery. You know, once you turn off, right? The no other keys works, no matter what you do, right? Unless you press that on-off button, right? When you press that on-off button, it comes back itself, right? Because in the software, all the keys are once it is put off, all the keys are not scanned. Same way, the seed is looking for the water and the temperature. Once it comes up, it starts the process, leaving software in it. understand now what is the nature of that software can you understand that what instruments you can use what instrument do we have other than this pancha mahabhutas that's why it is not in our hand it is not in the purview of the human being don't be in a, you know try. that's why you have to surrender well, if you are intelligent okay if you are intelligent once hearing this you will surrender there is no other way can you imagine 100 billion terabyte in one human by which is even not visible can we achieve that technology no way billion trillion years later we, we will not be able to you know so why waste time on that if you are intelligent you know the like the bees you know they are driving now they are getting struck wait wait a minute i have to i have to do something so they get reincarnated and that's how the the, the the thing comes up you know so that's what is missing in the, in the 